if a, a Muslim and Christian dialogue is very unique in that we both have an affinity towards Jesus, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. And it's powerful because the two largest faith groups in the world mm -hmm. have a, uh, an affinity towards Jesus, peace be upon him. But I feel like in the past, the Muslim Christian dialogues that I've been a part of, a lot of them were um, almost like we should form a relationship and put Jesus, peace be upon him on the side because those differences are so irreconcilable and uh, of how we view him uh, that we you know the best thing is for us to not talk about it because it'll it'll naturally get offensive and you know it'd almost be better had you not believed in jesus too because when you believe in him and you have your narrative about him then that automatically make can make someone feel very threatened with their own um, conception of christ so m my question is what do you think i mean how is it just to start off how do muslims and christians talk about christ wow yeah, I think part part of part of my my deep dwelling understanding about Jesus um, is is nestled in the Sermon on the Mount. It, Jesus, his longest sermon, um, which didn't have a golf joke uh, or any football references. I mean, so there's some critique there on his preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Right. But it, it, it was, his longest sermon is Sermon on the Mount. It's this series of, of, of statements about who's blessed. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the lonely. Uh, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, and in, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus ends with, blessed are the poor in spirit. And I'd, I'd, thought, about, I'd thought about this a lot about through the years, well, blessed are the poor in spirit. Those are just our friends who are economically disadvantaged. They're, they're, they're distanced from wealth, etc. But upon further reflection, poor in spirit really is about being truly human. Blessed are those who are truly human. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is talking about. So a way to answer your question for me is... Christians and Muslims need to embrace their humanness in order to have a very frank conversation about Jesus. Okay. What are the things that we share? We all have hopes and dreams, loves, uh, fears, right. anxieties, mm -hmm. um, diseases <laughs> and diseases, uh, discomforts, that what draws us together is our humanness. Right. And what Jesus invites us into is the blessed and belovedness of seeing each other as human and then having a conversation right. about this one who has made such an impact on our faiths. Right. Um, not just as global religions, but individually. Right. Um, as, as clergy, as clergy, we have modeled ourselves around humility and kindness, right. and grace, and peacemaking. All clergy. All clergy. Yes. All clergy. That is a... <laughs> <laughs> You're trapping me I'm now. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Let's... How, how about just the two of us? All right. You know, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to speak for you in this because I have seen humility <laughs> and kindness and peacemaking and love that, that you so freely give. And I, I, hope, I, I hope that our relationship exudes that, right? But in, in, we'll talk just the two of us. In, in our, in our, and we've had a conversation about this, about what it means to be a clergy person. I, I think living, living a life that is um, seeking both our true humanness, our authenticity, and also vulnerability for the world, uh, gives us an understanding about who Jesus really was. And why Jesus still makes an impact on these global uh, on these global movements. Right. But we were at a restaurant, and my my kids were there, and my wife was there, and uh, a gentleman comes up from from Valley Ranch, and says, um, I, "I know I know Easter is this coming Saturday or this coming Sunday." I said, "Absolutely, absolutely, it is." Thank you so much for remembering. And then we had this really robust conversation about Jesus. And my youngest son, uh, as, as the family was walking away and we were sitting there, 
he said, Dad, can we invite him to teach our Sunday school class? <laughs> <laughs> We'd learn a lot from him. And I think that's that's what that's what it that's what it means for for me to have re- interfaith relationships, especially an interfaith relationship with a Muslim brother, is to have this conversation and remind me that Jesus was human, right. and and to ground me in that, and that's that's the gift that we have. That's the gift that I that I see in a Muslim's faith journey with Jesus. Mm-hmm. It is so inspiring. I was talking about my own uh, meditation life. I've started this meditation practice that I'm gleaning a lot from and started mm-hmm. to open up some, some texts from Islam about mm-hmm. meditation and what it means. And Did you she, read Yaqeen's paper on how to be a mindful Muslim? I need to. You gotta send it to you. Okay. I, it's it's in my in, they're all flagged I promise all the Yakin Institute from the last three months are flagged I have not stopped long enough to appreciate what 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 your what Yakin is doing I wish that other Christians would sign on to this because it's huge it's huge I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. being a mindful Muslim in her in her mindset was um, it's the full prostration with the forehead on the floor. Right. Will you remind me what? It's called uh, sujud, so the full. Sujud. Yeah, so the prostration. Actually, masjid means place of sujud, place of prostration, since it's oh. the core of the prayer. Okay. So falling on your face in prayer, yes. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. So uh, she was mentioning that in that position, um, that one teacher mentioned it like it was a wheelbarrow, and it's an opportunity for all of those, uh, all of those uh, sins, and and you're asking a forgiveness just fall out, yeah. and you and you reach back and and taking that breath in again mm-hmm. with God, it refreshes you. Now that that's been been a weight lifted, I wish in the Christian tradition <laughs> there was a way for ha- for us to have have that 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 moment where we determine. We determine that we're going to let go of the things that that have kept us so stiff and so fearful about being in conversation with another faith, mm. and actually open ourselves up, breathe deep in a relationship that can transform their lives. I think that's an, it, it. I think you were you were right in identifying it as an insecurity. Mm. If I'm insecure in my own beliefs, then I am very hesitant to have them challenged or to have them opened up to a conversation. I would much rather, you know, not have holes poked in it and just keep it to myself and um, and not be in conversation with anyone. And that can that can lead to a very standoffish type of behavior. Mm-hmm. And the Quran calls on Muslims to reach out to Christians and to say, Ta'alu ila kalimatin salat, come to a common word between us and you that we worship none but but God. And then build from there. Right, and so the Quran actually calls us to, to to call with that with that commonality first, and to start from the commonality. Yeah. And if your beliefs are making you standoffish towards people that don't share your beliefs, that says a lot about your faith and your character. And in Islam, those are the two main things that make up a person. The Prophet peace be upon him put, he said, if if uh, you know, if someone comes to you with faith and character, don't turn that person away. And so the, the character is the manifestation of the faith. Right. And one of the Muslim sages described it as a spoon to a plate of food. He said, if the spoon, if, the, if, if a spoon tastes good, you know that the rest of the food is good. <laughs> so he said the tongue to the heart is that. And most of character is manifested through tongue, through the way you talk to people. And so if we can't talk to people in a loving way, in a beautiful way, then that means that there's some, that we're in shambles on the inside and that yeah. there's something on the inside that's wrong and incorrect. And I also think that a lot of people view interfaith that way. And, you know, we made a conscious decision with Faith mm-hmm. for Dallas to call it a multi-faith coalition mm-hmm. because we didn't want people to feel like they'd have to lose some of their faith to come to the table with people of other faiths. That right. you're not going to be asked to pray to someone else's liturgy or to mm-hmm. forsake your own creed or to, to do something that's very uncomfortable. The only discomfort will be in letting go the apprehension that you have of speaking to someone that doesn't share your faith. Mm-hmm. Not in compromising your faith itself, but in compromising yourself by making yourself vulnerable enough 
to sit with other people because we need that right now. And Muslims and Christians need to do that. And we need to build on what we can agree upon about Jesus, peace be upon him, the person of Christ, peace be upon him.